Kiev, capital of the Ukraine, as with Rome, it's built on seven hills dominated by many churches and monasteries. On the Dnieper River are numerous cultural treasures that were concealed for several years. The upper town has entered via the Golden Gate. The Zoloty Varota was the biggest and strongest of the four city gates. A two-level fortified stone tower in Byzantine style above the Annunciation Church with its golden dome and cross. In 1037, the main gate was recorded for the first time. It was so impressively built that later, the Mongolian Tatars did not dare to venture here. The huge fortified tower is 7 meters wide, 25 meters long and 12 meters high. Even so, it was eventually destroyed from the city side. Only on the 1500-year anniversary of the city's foundation was the gate rebuilt almost exactly as the original. And today it's a popular meeting place for both locals and tourists alike. The Latin Quarter originated in 1837 according to the design of Vicente Beretti, with splendid buildings such as the National Philharmonic. and the Baroque Opera and Ballet Theatre that is a more recent building because the original burned down soon after its construction. The Opera House was where local musical works and plays were performed along with those of foreign composers and authors, a temple of culture. A monument is a reminder of composer Mykola Lysenko. He was chairman of the Ukrainian club that encouraged and promoted culture. The National Bank was built in early Renaissance style, a fine monument that dates back to the beginning of the 20th century. The famous puppet theatre looks like a castle within a park. Only its comic figures indicate its real use. A unique monument of architectural splendour and culture overlooks the upper town. Sofiaskaya Sobor Cathedral a Ukrainian house of God that was modelled on the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. The Orthodox Church is one of several mainstream Christian religions, the most well-known of which was established in Russia and contains an array of its own unique designs. The Orthodox Church has its own rites, canon and religious art. A number of its works of art date back to the 11th century. Walls, columns and domes as well as arcade arches are decorated with numerous images of martyrs and biblical events. Today, the Sofiskaya Zabor is a museum. It was previously the center of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, the main seat of the Metropolitan Bishop of Kiev. In front of the cathedral is Sophie's Square, 
in the center of which is a statue of Het Man on a horse. It's made out of the bronze of old ships. Hetman Bodan Kimmelnikaya was the hero of Kiev's struggle for freedom against the Poles. Several heathen temples and tombs once stood on the old Kiev sovereign hill until Christianization in 988 AD. The sons of Yaroslav the wise man erected a monastery and a church. And finally, sovereign Sviatopolk had the single domed Michael church built. Archangel Michael had been the patron saint of the Byzantine realm for the poor as well as for the country's rulers. He was also patron saint of the Kiev Rus realm. In 1240, the church was plundered by the Tatars and then for 350 years lay neglected. Hetman Mazepa had it rebuilt. Its Ukrainian Baroque design was later augmented with classical buildings. Thus originated this extraordinary architectural masterpiece that unites seven centuries. Sovereign Volodymyr was born the son of a female slave who was made pregnant by King Sviatoslav. In the subsequent fratricidal war, he was the victor. He united the East Slavic countries into the Kiva Rus realm and as the Baptist, he was duly canonized. The Andreas Church is another masterpiece of Baroque architecture. It looks as though it's floating above the edge of Andreas Hill. That's why it's known as the Flying Church. According to legend, the Apostle Andreas lay the first foundation stone. He has a special meaning for the Slavish Christians because he preached in this region. On his journey to Rome, he followed the Dnieper to the hills of Kiev, where he erected a cross. He prophesied a great future for the city that would one day be built here. And he blessed the hills on which many beautiful churches would appear. The Andreas Path is the oldest of the city, where today there are splendid residences. In former times, there were only humble buildings for craftsmen and traders. The middle class built their modest wooden houses and in the middle of the 19th century, this area became a red light district. And later a meeting place for artists and intellectuals. The historic street leads from the upper town to the lower town, from Volodymyr down to Podil. The Montmartre of Kiev has retained its character and the street art attracts many visitors. The lower town, Podil, is the old town quarter at the waterside with the Bokroska church and the Pirogotsha church located in between the houses of both traders and fishermen. The equestrian monument of Hetman Sahai Dutnia pays tribute to the great ruler of the Black Sea.
Purim is situated on a plain between the right bank of the Dnieper and a range of hills. The splendid buildings demonstrate the wealth of the former trading town. Its dramatic past is still indicated by the names of the streets. When the Tatars destroyed the upper town, Podil became the center and later the largest district. The funicular, a short funicular railway, conveniently connects the lower town with the banks of the Dnieper in a short two-minute journey. The harbour district was once the heart of the city in which ships from Constantinople and the Mediterranean area anchored, and goods of all kind were transported. Here on the eastern bank are the landing stages of the day trip boats. Passengers constantly come and go on all the various vessels. The river is affectionately known as Father Dnieper. It's a large river and an ancient trading route between the North and the Black Sea. A national symbol. The river flows beneath seven bridges that connect both sections of the city. The oldest and the biggest is the Patton Bridge. way in which to end the day is on a boat trip, past the anchored cruise ships whose passengers explore the old town. The Dnieper has been used extensively since the 18th century. After the Volga and the Danube, it is the third longest river in Europe. The Hydro Park lies on two river islands on the Dnieper. It's the city's most popular leisure area. Its sandy beaches are ideal for bathing. The park is a lively place with numerous restaurants. The Kreshatsky is the city's main street with a width that varies between 80 and 100 meters. Here, Kiev turns into a modern metropolis. Splendid civic houses flank the 1.2 kilometer long and eight lane street. Here was the city's first central heating system, the first telephone connection and the first metalled road. After the horse tram followed the first electric tram in Russia. The Square of Independence separates the boulevard into two sections. Here was once the Goat Lake that was created in 1840. Its earth walls and structure were dismantled. A monument of the city's founder is surrounded by a fountain. It features the princely brothers of Kia, Czech, Chorev and their sister Libid. They are thought to have built a fortress on a hill above the Dnieper. The freestanding Petruskaya Gate supports the Archangel Michael who appears to protect the city with his open wings.
Volodymyr Cathedral was built in honor of Saint Volodymyr. However, its construction proved to be too expensive as its design included 13 couplers. The Metropolitan Bishop donated 7,000 rubles and the Tsar permitted fundraising throughout Russia, but the result fell short and the project seemed to fail. Later, when Alexander II visited Kiev for the inauguration of the railroad, he ordered construction to continue. Seven couplers would be enough. The cathedral was completed. A further 14 years passed by until its consecration due to the amount of time that it took to decorate the interior. But the effort of both time and money was well worth it. Today, the cathedral is the main church of the Ukraine. Another of the city's attractions is the House of Chimeras, also known as Monster House, an extraordinary building in wild Art Nouveau style. Fabulous animals and mystic beings decorate the facade, Corinth columns, capitals and roof ledge. Here, Western Rationale meets with exotic fantasy. Orodekia, its wealthy co-owner, had this strange house built along with the figures created by sculptor Elio Sala, ostensibly after his own designs. A circular double row colonnade is the entrance to the huge Dynamo Kiev Stadium. Named after the legendary footballer and trailer Lobanovsky. Enthusiasm and loyalty to their club is vital for the local fans. The matches are always exciting events full of temperament and emotion. Dynamo Kiev won the UEFA Cup in both 1975 and 1986. The entrance to the zoo was indicated by sculptures of lions and apes. It was once the largest zoo of the former USSR. Around 3,000 animals live here, but the enclosures are old-fashioned and have seen better days. The Babi Yar Memorial is located at the northwestern edge of the city in the once 2.5 kilometer long and 50 meter deep Babi Yar Canyon. Today it's known as a place of gross inhumanity and is one of the biggest mass graves in history, a place of tragedy and contemplation. On the 29th of September 1941, all the Jews of the city were requested to come here with their clothing and documentation. They were subsequently forced to undress here on the periphery of the city and were shot in cold blood. A mass murder of unspeakable proportion. It's said that around 35,000 Kiavian Jews were killed here in just two days. In 
In 1969, the Pyrohovo Open Air Museum was founded close to the city. It features both local architecture and rural life. Festivals and folklore events frequently take place here. Traditional customs are celebrated in traditional clothing. Farmers use scythes and about 320 farmhouses of the 16th to the 20th century have been relocated here. Furniture and tools are on display and each building can be entered. There are windmills too. Time seems to stand still here, a place of nostalgia. Close to the National Museum that features the battles of the fatherland, there's a gigantic statue of a woman, Mother Homeland, Rodina Matt. At the foot of the 108 metre high memorial is a group of heroic freedom fighters. They symbolize the victory of the Soviet realm over the fascist army in 1943. The base of the huge statue contains the war museum. In 15 halls and on three floors, the history of the Second World War is comprehensively documented. Vehicles, paintings and weapons are exhibited here. Especially touching is the Remembrance Hall, with photographs and sad news of the KIA, and various tributes to the heroes of the Soviet Union. Not far away is the Kievo Pechetsky Lavra, one of the oldest and most important monastery complexes of the Russian Orthodox Church. The history of the monastery began quite modestly. Revered monk Antonius lived for many years in a monastery on the holy mountain of Athos in Greece. He subsequently returned to his home country and lived as a hermit for the rest of his life within a cave on the banks of the river Dnieper. At that time, Grand Prince Vladimir made Christianity the state religion and Kiev became the political and financial center of the East Slav countries. Further monks followed and a community of hermits was formed that lived under monastic rule. They lived in caves until construction of the eventual monastery. A visit to the caves is a must. Humid, warm air comes out of the corridors. And finally a number of coffins appear in the niches. Here the monastery's founder and various other saints of Russia's religious history were laid to rest, along with countless hermits who perished in the caves. Following independence, Kiev has been transformed. The Soviet city has turned into an East European metropolis. 
but its culture, history and ambience of bygone days has managed to survive right up to the present day.